All right, so I just finished my reread of Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson, book three of the Stormlight Archive. I'm really enjoying my reread of the Stormlight Archive in preparation for Winds and Truth. And again, you don't have to reread every single time a new book comes, uh, releases, but I, I wanted to do it. You know, I've read this a while ago, a few years back, and I wanted to revisit the world before the final book or the, eh, the, the final book, I guess, in the first arc of the Stormlight Archive, because um, there's like five more after afterwards, and who knows how many uh, novellas. But I'm really enjoying the reread, right? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. The first time I read Oathbringer, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. And the ending to me was so disappointing. The first, again, the first time I read this, that I just, it soured my opinion of the entire book, even though this book has some of my favorite scenes in the entire Cosmere, right? Um, I think the first time I read this, I gave it three stars. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think the, the flaws of this book were so glaring, like it was in my face because I had just finished reading Words of Radiance. And to me, Words of Radiance, first time I read this was a, pretty much a perfect book for me. It was just consistently good. And even on my reread, it was still really good. Um, so I just think like this was such a surprise um, because of the the low points of this book. But on a reread, I definitely like it much better. I mean, it's still, it, it's still not a, it's still not as good as Words of Radiance. I still feel that this could have been like 200 pages shorter. Um, but uh, I, I definitely like it much better. I think this is such a weird book for me because it has some of my favorite moments, as I've said, favorite moments in the entire Cosmere. Like the peaks of this book are so high. Like they're insanely emotionally impactful. Like by the time I got to part five, I was just consistently emotional. I was consistently on the verge of tears. But at the same time, a lot of moments in here are just, it felt flat for me. A lot of plot threads was just disappointing, even on a reread, right? Uh, it It's one of those books that felt like it dragged or it, it was kind of a slog, but at the same time, it felt rushed uh, to me, at least. Even part five, where the, the big battle happens. And uh, as I've said, these are insanely emotionally impactful moments, but even that it felt, um, and maybe it's because I just finished reading the heroes, but Brandon Sanderson uses kind of like the similar, a, a similar switch or switches in points of view in order to give us the, the lay of the land, um, or what's happening in different parts of like the, the, the battle in the, in the book. And it just felt choppy. You know, as opposed to in the heroes where it just flowed so beautifully. Here it felt choppy. It felt like, okay, let's zoom in here, zoom out, zoom in here. In the heroes, it felt like, oh, this is happening. Boom, that scene ended. Now we go here. And it just flowed so beautifully. And again, maybe it's just that. But even without that, there's a lot of, uh, I, I guess, plot threads that it felt like it just, it, it was sort of discarded halfway through. And an example of that is Sadeus's murder. Like, what that could have been like something really interesting for Adolin. But at the end of it, like when it was revealed, everyone was just like, eh, whatever. You know, it's it's kind of like if a golden retriever tells you that, oh, uh, well, golden retrievers can talk. But in this case, Adolin is a golden retriever, so he can talk. Um, everyone was just like, eh, dismissive of it. It was like, eh, whatever, you killed Sadeus, but he, he's kind of a dick, so... It's fine. Never mind that it it dead ass inspired a Reshepir to copy that murder and kill a bunch of other people. And, but n no one's likes uh, blaming Adolin for that. Or like, I'm not even saying that Adolin is at fault for that. But it's like, isn't he at least a little bit culpable for that? Um, I think he was forgiven way too easily. Or um, yeah, Shalom was like, eh, whatever. And Dalinar was even like, yeah, it's it's fine. We'll we'll figure it out. You know, you'll you'll be king or whatever. And I that was just disappointing to me because I felt like that could have 
been taken to a different direction or it could have been explored a little bit more. It would have been such an interesting aspect of Adolin's character. But because everyone was just like, eh, whatever, you know, he's a dick. You know, you, you're right to do that. It was just sort of benched for the the most of the series, even though like Adolin's secretly dealing with that, but not really that much because he's like, eh, he did deserve it. Like Sadeus deserved it. But I don't know, like just the way it ended, how everyone was like so accepting of it. I just, yeah, I, I, I didn't like it. You know, maybe it's the right choice for Adolin's character in order to give way for a more interesting um, arc with Maya. But I don't know, like it's just murder is is a pretty big, th maybe that's another uh, reason for why Adolin can't be like, oh, I'm gonna be king. Um, but I, I just think that that was, uh, that, that could have gone a different path, like not necessarily turning Adolin into freaking Darth Vader, but, um, confronting the darkness within Adolin and then him overcoming it. Right. I think that would have been more interesting, but instead we, we, we played, there was more attention towards the freaking, uh, imaginary, Love triangle. Well, well, it's not really a love triangle, but Veil being interested in in Calden, Calden being like, oh, maybe. I think that is important for Shalon's character, whatever. But I just wish that Adolin was given the same amount of attention in this book, right? Um, what else? Again, this is some of my favorite scenes sequences in uh, in fantasy possibly. So even uh, Kaladin returning to Hearthstone and just being like a straight up boss. Um, Shalon confronting or, you know, fighting Reshepir, the unmade, um, and her being in the ghost bloods and all that kind of stuff. That was really cool. Um, Dalinar, Dalinar has my favorite flashback sequences, I think. It goes Dalinar, Shalon, Kaladin, and possibly Eshenai. I don't know, I'm gonna have to reread Rhythm of War. But uh, Dalinar's scenes are always like really freaking good. Um, obviously, the you can't take my pain, like towards towards the end of it, like you can't take my pain. It still hits as hard as it did in the first uh, the first time I read this. It was still freaking amazing. And then follow that up with like Tong, you know, like Tong being okay for like a minute, and then Ash was telling him like, we we betrayed you. Like we left you there to suffer torment alone for 4,500 years. And what was Tong's first reaction? What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful gift you gave them. 4,500 years, enough time for them to prepare. And she, bro, that got me so, like, dog. Tong is the only true hero in Cosmere. Like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, Tong, Tong is so freaking badass and so, dude. And then you follow that up with Tef's third ideal that, um, I will protect those I hate, even if the one I hate the most is myself. Dude, ah, uh, that was just like, you know, I, bro, I fell down to my knees and shit. One of my favorite characters, again, like his whole, arc with uh the the fire moss is it that that's what it's called the fire moss and then him swearing the third ideal and then when he emerged from that oath gate and then just start flying around bro i was i was screaming i was like let's go yeah i'm so ready for rhythm of war <laughs> so ready those moments like one after another it just broke me dog um Lots of fantastic scenes in here. Venli, I like Venli this time around uh, much more. I think the first time I read the series, I was pretty much, whatever. You know, I like Eshenai, but why Why is Venli still here? But this time around, it's like I find her character a lot more interesting. I also love Kaladin's arc in here where he was like slowly overcoming his prejudice against Light Eyes, even against Burshendi. He spent some time with, uh, with Ken Sa and the mother dudes, like the Parshendi, 
and then he also spends some time with um, some tenors, the the light eyes, the lower ranked light eyes, and then he started realizing things that, that bro, we're not all that different and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so I'm really he, he's slowly becoming Unity as well. Again, as I've said, my favorite moments in the Cosmere are in this book. It's just it also has a lot of disappointing things like things that I didn't really like and things that felt too slow and there's things that felt too rushed and um and there there was even a time in here like shades more I think that that could have been shorter like the the chapters in shades more that could have been shorter there there was for a while it's like well where are we going with this it's a little bit directionless um but uh but yeah like towards the middle of this book like it definitely dragged a little bit I I, I think there are just moments in here where we spent too much time on it. Like uh, even towards the end, when we're nearing the, fi the the final battle and all that kind of stuff, um, just people trying to get there. It's like, okay, it's let, let's get on with the story, you know? Um, but yeah, as I've said, Dalinar's moments, always so powerful. Um, I, I did think that there was a little bit too much of... Uh, you know, sitting around discuss discussing politics, but I think that's very important for Dalinar's character as well. But I, there's just a lot of it, like a lot of, uh, Dalinar spent way too long just figuring out how to be a leader. Um, I'm not saying that it should have been shorter. I'm just saying that like, after like, uh, like five scenes of that, I'm like, okay, let's, let's get on with the story. Uh, but again, it's, it's not a, it's not a short, but it's 1200 pages. Uh, so I definitely think that this could have been shorter. I, that's all I'm saying. Like, this could have been like a thousand pages and it would have been awesome. I think we could have cut off some other plot threads that didn't really amount to anything, but also spend more time exploring other arcs, you know, uh, Elo cars scenes fantastic but yeah as i've said there are like plot threads in here that felt like it was a little too convenient like it was wrapped up way too neatly it's it was like it literally felt like there was a checklist of okay this is what's going to happen i really enjoyed oathbringer this time around um i think i'll give it like a 4.25 4.5 stars this time around which is a huge jump from three stars the first time i read it but it's still it's still not you know perfect there's still a lot of things that didn't really work for me in here but because of the just the peaks of this uh th this book they were just so good and it affected me emotionally to like just a level that i really enjoy man um it was just fantastic rhythm of war i think i liked better i don't know if i'm gonna like it this time around um, I'm kind of worried about the lectures, but, uh, I, I think the first time I read, read that it felt like overwhelming. I was like, there's so much information. What am I supposed to do here? What's next for me? I think I'm going to go read Fury of the Gods that will be releasing on Tuesday, October 22nd. And then after that, I'll figure out, you know, I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll go read Dawn Shard. Um, and then the unholy consult and then i'll go into rhythm of war and then whatever happens you know um anyways i'll see you soon peace oh by the way this is how i think the stormlight archive will end right so dalinar will will grab the high storm and the ever storm and just like smash them together and it would be so invested that it would break the fourth wall he will he would look straight into the camera this is a book but he would look straight into the camera and say i am the stormlight archive and then american pie plays in the background as we fade into black